Check. 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 All of this is making me a little nervous. 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 It's awfully dark here. Dark. On this show. By myself. Alone. And, uh... Not so weird. There seems to be these small, drippy pellets all around. Frass. Frass. And some kind of strange noise in the background. Probably produced by Lee Coppers. I think I'll sing myself a little song to try to make me feel better. It's not gonna work. It's not probably not such a good idea. Why do you build me up? Build me up, Buttercup Baby, just to let me down. Let me down. You mess me around. And then, worst of all, worst of all, you never call, baby, when you say you will. Say you will. But I love you still. I need you. I need you. More than anyone, darling. You know that I have from the start. So build me up, build me up, buttercup, and don't break my heart. I'll be over at ten and tell me time and again that you're late. You're late. I'll wait around and then I went to the door. I can't take anymore. I can't it's take not it. you. You let me down again, baby, baby. Try baby, to find a little baby. time and I'll make you happy. I'll, I'll be, be home. home. I'll, I'll be waiting inside the phone, wait for you. This is really awkward. Why do you build me up? Build me up, Buttercup, baby. And let me down. Let me down. And mess me around. Worst of all, worst, worst of all, all. Call, baby, when you say you will say, say you, you will, will but, but I, I love you still, still. I, need I, need you. You. I need you more than anyone, darling. You, you know, know that, that I have from the start. So build, build me up, up, build me up, buttercup, but don't break my heart. So hey, Irene, how's it going? I see that you're walking alone on this uh, <clears throat> dark street late at night. Yeah, I know. I've been walking alone on this dark street late at night, and it's actually making me quite nervous. Why is it nervous? You don't seem like a particularly nervous kind of person. Well, I've had all these strange occurrences happen. Before. Well, like what? To start with, as I was walking, there were these small black pellets all on the ground. And I'm not really sure. They went crunch, crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch under my feet, but I'm not really sure what they were. Sounds like frass. Frass. F-R-A-S-S. Yes, yes Irene. Frass. F-R-A-S-S. F-R-A-S-S. Frass. Frass. F-R-A-S-S. Other than that, I wouldn't be too worried about frass. I mean, uh, we can talk more about frass here in a minute, can't we? Yes, I believe we can talk a lot more about frass, but I want to talk about the background noise that was going on at the same time. Oh, you mean that whoop, 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 whoop? Yes, that noise. Exactly. Well, I was a little bit worried about that because I'm not sure where it's coming from. I thought it might be alien, but then I don't believe in aliens, so I wasn't sure. I think those are the amplified sounds of a leaf hopper. Really? Yes. Well, who in the world would be amplifying leaf hopper sounds? And why do they sound so strange? Well, I think you know the answer to all of this already, Irene. We all know that the leaf hopper is a common name applied to the species in the family Cicadellidae. Right, Cicadellidae. C I C A D E L L I D A E. Cicadellidae. C I C A D E L L I D A E. Also known as hoppers. They are minute plant feeding insects that are now in the order Hemiptera, which is interesting because for the longest time they were put 
with all of the other plant feeding sucking insects in the order Homoptera, but no longer. Leafhoppers are found, of course, all over the world and constitute the second largest hemipteran family. They have over 20,000 described species. And the interesting thing about that is a large majority of the leafhoppers are described from their genitalia. Well, that's jumping the gun a little bit. There's lots of incredible, colorful, different shaped leafhoppers all over the world. But yes, you're right. There are often many cryptic species or species that look superficially exactly the same that are described from their genitalia. Especially the male genitalia. Yes, especially the male genitalia. That's interesting, though. The leafhoppers or the calls of the leafhoppers is often another way that scientists differentiate different species of leafhopper from each other. You mean the calls are different? They amplify the calls very loud using a stylus that is not too much different than a phonograph stylus. Record the sounds. Often leafhoppers have different waveforms in their sounds that differentiate them from each other. One of the reasons may be is that leafhoppers are very plant-specific. Plant-specific. What does that mean? It means that a leafhopper likes a certain kind of plant. And of course, different plants sound different if you thump them because they have different densities and different substrates. Basically, what a leafhopper does is it thumps real loud on one end of the plant and then the vibrations carry through the plant to the other side, creating that thump, 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 thump <laughs> sound that we commonly know of as a leafhopper sound. So they're vibration specialists. Yes, they're vibration specialists. Hey, who are you? Yeah, hey, uh, who are you? Who are you? Who, who, who are, are you? you? I who want to know you? who you are. Who I are asked you? first. I who are you? Small but I asked insignificant first. Being. Um, weird. Who are you? I'm a small and insignificant being that hangs out under rocks and sometimes under plant material. I'm not a leaf hopper, if that's what you're thinking, because I'm not. I'm really curious about them and stuff, but it's not really important. I wasn't even going to suggest that you were a leaf hopper, a tree hopper, or anybody in Hemiptera. Nobody was suggesting that. Although I do have these piercing, sucking mouth parts, but just that's an aside. That was something I changed later in life, like my name. What is your name? That's really not very important, and it's none of your business. It is important. Your feelings are very important to us, actually. One of the things I did want to say a few things about leafhoppers, since we're on the topic. And uh, if you don't mind... I, I hardly even noticed. I just didn't think you got specific enough. Talk about some individual kinds of leafhoppers. You know, I mean, they're not all the same or anything. There's so many species. This is true. We weren't trying to insinuate that ever all the leaf hoppers were the same. Well, I'm just going to talk about a couple of the family members. To start with the gl- <coughs> excuse me. To start with the grape leaf hopper, um, as the name might suggest, it it is true that the insect's principal food is the grape. That's grape. <laughs> but it also infests beech, blackberry, Boston ivy, burdock, catnip, currant, gooseberry, grass, maple, plum, and Virginia creeper. That's quite a plant, a hefty plant list. Well, that's just the beginning of it. The saliva injected into the plant by the scarlet and green leaf hopper blocks plant tubes essential for the transport of sap causing the plant to wither and drop its leaves. And die. Um, are there lots of leafhoppers that end up being agricultural pests? Of course. I mean, think about it, right? They get their food by sticking a needle-like stylet into the plant. You know, lots of bad diseases are transmitted from one thing to another by needles. Uh, that's true. Nothing's different in the animal plant kingdom, for sure. I'm a little guy. The sharpshooter. It's one of our largest leaf hopper, but it's a little bit confusing because some people call it a tree hopper. It's not true that leaf hoppers are on leaves and tree hoppers are on trees. And anyway, trees have leaves, right? 
That's a misnomer. Some leaf hoppers can hang out on trees, and tree hoppers can hang out on leaves. <laughs> it's unfortunate. But it's called the sharpshooter because it leaps rapidly from danger at the speed of a sharpshooter's bullet. So what is, uh, what is a, a, a sharpshooter? Is like a cowboy? Yes, it's a cowboy. Do I have to really explain everything? I mean, really. So there's other things we can talk about too, but I just wanted to get there and talk about some leaf hoppers for a minute or two, if that's okay. I'm gonna go away now. Well, it was nice meeting you. I'm a little guy. That seemed very larger than life and made me a bit nervous. Me too. I wonder what's gonna happen next. Well, this is the point of the story where the narrator comes in to try to fill in a few details. The first thing we're going to talk about was details, something we missed previously, is the discussion of frass. Frass. F-R-A-S-S. Frass. So it's the fine material from phytophagus insects. And it's the waste afterwards, after they've gotten done digesting plants. There we go. That's what frass is. But if you wanted to know more about insect frass, insect frass is quite exciting. You can tell that I'm just thrilled, beaming over even. Insects' waste products are called frass, and it can be a dry thing all the way to a wet thing. That termites, you know, the things that eat your houses, they eat the wood and stuff. Termites can't naturally eat wood. I mean, what can eat wood, right? Nothing. Well, except bacteria and certain microbes. How much wood would a termite chuck if a termite could chuck wood? So termites have this symbiotic relationship. The microbes live within their gut. So termites couldn't exist without these microbes then, is that what you're saying? Well, that's exactly what I'm saying, yeah. If it wasn't for the microbes, there would be no termites. So, but they aren't born with these microbes. Instead, they pass them back and forth to each other. So they have to eat the adult frass when they're born. So we have microbes that pass through frass. What else passes through frass like that that could be interesting? For ants and social insects, it's a really important means of communication. The most disgusting creatures are the ones that we think is most disgusting, like the cockroach. It's actually fairly clean. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I can see where you're going with this topic. Well, the idea is that cockroaches actually remove frass from their nesting environment. And that's why we see a lot of times cockroach pellets or frass in the middle of kitchens and places we find disgusting. And not necessarily under the refrigerator where the colony is. Yeah, even the most disgusting things have their limits, don't they? Yeah. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us here in the Auk Theater for an Insect Corner. If you wanted to make the huge leap of extrapolation to say that there may be parallels between insect societies and human societies, typically, of course, we know all of these parallels are incredibly superficial and that Mostly it's because the human mind likes to anthropomorphize things. That's the reason why we like puppies with big eyes as well. I am a little guy. See you some other time. Bye. 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 Bye.